We're back on WGN TV Political Report. Now, when you vote in this November election, after you choose a candidate for governor, a congressperson, state and legislative representative, down ballot, a long list of judges hoping you will keep them on the bench in Cook County will be there. Now, those judges impact many areas of life, criminal cases, traffic tickets, and so much more. But their names and their backgrounds are often overlooked by voters because they don't know them. This year's judicial election guide from Injustice Watch aims to change that. Maya Dukmasova is a senior reporter with Injustice Watch and joins me this morning with more on the guide. Maya, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Let's just briefly talk about what the mission of Injustice Watch is. Well, we're a newsroom uh, with a civic mission as well. So we have uh, news coverage, uh, news articles about the court system, immigration, housing, uh, but also we produce this judicial election guide for every primary and general election. And there's hard copy, so people that get it online as well. Because many people are not familiar with judicial candidates, I mean, let's be honest, they tend to vote on gender or race or ethnicity and those kind of factors based on the name. But why is it important for people to do their homework when they're voting for judges? These elected officials are the people we're all most likely to encounter and that will take decisions that will directly impact our lives. So as you mentioned, it might be a criminal case, a traffic matter. It could be your divorce. It could be your child custody issue, your uh, you know mortgage foreclosure. Probate. Exactly. Your, how your will is going to be divvied up. So these elected officials, uh, have the they take the most some of them make some of the most consequential decisions about people's lives and sometimes you get to like pick a candidate but but at this time around people are going to see I think at 61 what are called retention races which is it's a yes or no vote can you explain to people why they're voting yes and no yeah so once a judge is actually elected for the first time in subsequent elections every six years in the county uh, they aren't challenged by challengers like other elected officials. Instead, voters are asked yes or no to keeping them on the bench. And they have to get 60% yes votes to stay on for another six-year term or another 10-year term if they're an appellate justice or a Supreme Court justice. And as you know, there's people who just, I'm voting no for everybody. I'm voting yes for everybody, whatever. Yeah. And that's just, it's just a waste. It's not a great way to make <laughs> a decision about a political candidate. That's why we make the guide to help people make a more informed decision. So prior to this, because you've been around since 2016 with this guide, Prior to this, a lot of bar associations, and they still do rate these rate these candidates. So the American Bar Association, Chicago Bar, Black Bar, Gay Bar. There's so many, um, and uh, you spend your organization spends several months researching each judge's judicial uh, and legal experience, whether they've been a prosecutor or a public defender, community involvement, political connections, conduct, controversies. You send surveys to the judges. You even report whether they're if they're on the bench for retention, whether they've been reversed above. Yep. So how does somebody work with that information? So the guide is really easy to navigate whether you're using it in print or uh, the online version or using it on your phone um, we have a kind of condensed version with some icons and key things about each each candidate and then you can choose to you know click on the info button and see the full range of information about them we also have some campaign finance information if we found something noteworthy from when they first ran for the bench and we also have you mentioned the bar association ratings all of the bar association ratings on every single one of these judges are also included in the guide Guide. So it's really a one-stop shop for all the information you might need. And for somebody who says, okay, that's great, but uh, this bar association rates them qualified. This one says they're not qualified. Um, you know, this one, this judge has been reversed a lot. This one's never reversed. I mean, how do they weigh that? How should they weigh that? Well, so we don't make endorsements. Uh, it's really up to each individual voter to decide what matters to them. I mean, some people vote on principle, like they say, you know, I don't want any former public defenders to be judges. I don't want any former prosecutors to be judges. Because they I might be biased in their view. In their view. Uh, you know, some people might think that they don't want anyone who has even one negative rating from a bar group. So we don't tell people how to vote, but uh, I think as you work through your way down the ballot, you should have everything you need to know uh, in order to align your vote with your own values. So anybody watching television ads can't avoid the Illinois Supreme Court ads. They're all over the place. So a lot of people, uh, and certainly Cook County, it's a huge place, they're going to go, where's that Supreme Court vote I need to do? They're not going to get to do it. Can you explain? Not in Cook County. So we're constantly getting this question. Uh, the two Supreme Court uh, districts that have vacant seats where there are now these very hotly contested races are the second and third district, and those are uh, collar counties. So nobody in Cook County is going to get to vote in those races. Uh, we do have a retention judge, Mary Jane Tice, who is a Supreme Court justice. She is Cook. Count. She's yeah. from Cook County. Uh, there's three Supreme Court justices that are from uh, Cook County, and she's one of them, and you get to decide if you want her on for another 10 years or not. And uh, she's also the incoming uh, chief justice of the Supreme Court since... Um, 
um, Ann Burke has stepped yeah, down. Has, has retired. And and it, by the way, people, are, there's the political piece to this too, because depending on which way the races go, it will and can decide who actually controls the Supreme Court in a four to three situation. A lot of candidates advertise like the Supreme Court, but some other just judges do. Do, is, do you have a view, or does the Justice Watch say anything about you know these aren't supposed to be political decisions? So should people kind of ignore the ads and do the research? Definitely, I would say you should not be voting for any political candidate ever <laughs> based on the ads that you see on TV. It's always good to do your research and dig a little deeper, you know, than just what the ads say. Uh, but for the for the Cook County voters, for the judges that we have on our ballots here, we luckily I think are not really bombarded that much with ads yeah. about them. And before we run out of time, people say, "Wow, I want to have that while I'm voting." Can they bring this in with them to the voting booth? Absolutely, they can bring it on their phone. They can print it out at home and bring that with them. They can use the pay, the print version of our guides that'll be available around the county. So yes, it's okay to bring the cheat sheet. It's okay to bring your phone into the voting booth. That's totally fine. All right, such valuable information. People really need to do what they're doing when they vote. Maya Dukmasova, thank you for coming with us, being with us today, and thank you for the information. Thank you for having us. So important. All right, one more break. We're back with a look at the week ahead when we come back.